Hello YouTubers, this is part two of our video on etching using the Silhouette Cameo. So we made this guy last time and there's gonna be quite a lot of overlap because basically it's the same same principle but the software will be different. Um, so when you etch on the Cameo, you have two options. You can use a sketch file and have it draw out like this or you can use the sketching tools to take a design and fill it in with etching. Um, they're basically the same, you're just going to do a little bit different in the software. Um, and I do want to throw out the caution again. The Cameo is not designed for this. Um, this is kind of a workaround for it. It can etch very thin in metal. Um, it cannot etch fat metal. And if this is something you really love, the Curio, you, you might want to look into getting it. Because this is what the Curio is meant to do. The Curio can etch just about anything, including the big fat acrylic pieces. Let's see. So that was done on the Curio. It was etched and then I put rhinestones on it. But see how thick it is? There's no way you're getting that through a Cameo. But these guys are small enough you can. So, but if the if um, so if this is something you love, the Curio might be something you want to look into. If this is a one-off or a two-off or every once in a while you want to make something, the Cameo might be fine for you to do this in. Um, but just know the Curio is much better at this. This is just kind of a workaround because I get asked quite often about etching in the Cameo. So let me go show you the supplies you're going to need. All right, you are going to need one very well-loved mat. Um, don't ever throw away your mats. You never know when you might need them. But this is one very, very well-loved mat. If you want to use a new mat, that's fine. But do know that you're probably going to render that mat fairly useless because, especially for this kind with the fill, all of this metal is getting removed in very fine little pieces and it's going to stick to your mat. So basically, wherever it sticks to is going to render it fairly useless. So keep that in mind, but this is a fairly well-loved mat. Also, if you mess up or you make a mistake, it's not really the end of the world because it's not a brand new mat you're, you're wasting. And this is the double-sided adhesive sheets from Silhouette. Um, there is a clear sheet of adhesive in between here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut it out and use it for a template and to help keep it stuck to our mat. Um, and that way it doesn't matter that your mat's not really that sticky. This is taking part, this is taking the place of it. Um, there are other materials out there that you can use. I had this on hand, I had this on hand, and then we can use scraps for it too. So I'm probably just going to cut this piece off and use it. So, um, uh, but yeah, I like contact paper. I know is one of them and things like that, but, um, this is what we're going to use. And here, the, the tricky part is finding something that will fit through your machine. I bought this little charm set to etch actually on the Curio, um, but they seem to work fairly well. And then I have these, and I'm thinking I might actually email them and see how thick these are, because I don't have calipers, because um, the gauge doesn't seem to matter. But they are, um, these are brass blanks. So I grew up in the 80s when everything was shiny brass, and now it's not. So I feel kind of like nostalgic for shiny brassy things. I know, I'm crazy, but this is why we have them. <laughs> um, so, but I know they're not everybody's cup of tea. So, um, but these work, um, but these are an inch and a half and these are stainless steel and they're too, they're too tall. So see the difference in height and this one's too fat to go through the machine. This one's not. But I have these, so it's not just size, but I have these copper ones that are huge. But they're thin enough that they would probably go through, they would definitely go through the Curio or the Cameo. Because you see they're thinner than the brass. So um, I want to email them and see if I can get like an answer on how thick these are and which ones would go through the machine and not. So, but it's a little trial and error. This, like I said, this isn't what the Cameo is designed for. So some of it is trial and error. This one was an error. This is how I know it's not too, it's too fat. And see, it's all blurry and stuff on there because the machine hated it. And you can also etch using the Silhouette um, brand 
metal etching sheets. They're extremely thin, and I'm pretty sure that's a sketch file, but they're, they're thin and they can go right through if you want to etch using them. So this is my Cameo 2. I have gold rhinestoned it, in case you haven't seen it before. So this is our well-loved map. And the thing is, so when you feed him in here, I've been trying to shoot for having our blanks and our templates here because it's got a fairly high, high and wide clearance right here. You can probably get away with right here, um, but it definitely cannot go under, under the rollers. Um, I try not to move them because I never seem to get them back in the right spot. So I'm trying to shoot for here when we're making templates and, and placing them. And you also, when you, when we're, we're going to place our template, you want it to be under the inch bar um, because when you roll in the mat, it's going to, you're not going to be able to peel it back here. And then you're going to want it to sit right here because see where we have this lip and you're trying to place like a, a flat piece of rigid metal on a, on a curve. It doesn't go very well. You have a couple tip options when you're going to etch. We will be using the Chomos um, Precision Etching Tool. Um, it is quite pointy. Um, I just like it. It's got really thin lines for a very detailed etch. This is her regular etching tip. It's what I've been using to etch like the acrylics and I've been using it in the Cameo. Or not the Cameo, in the Curio for etching, um, etching those acrylics. And then this is the Silhouette tool. This is the Silhouette stippling and etching tool. It comes from them. Be honest, it's not my favorite thing. It gives a much rougher etch. However, it's fairly cheap. So if you're not sure about this, not a bad place to start with this guy. These two are much more expensive. However, they produce a much better etch. So if this is something that you're gonna do more than a handful of times or something you want to look better. These two are worth the investment if you ask me. If this is a, well, let's see what happens. This is totally a good place to start. It will produce a rougher etch. So let's go over to the software. All right, so I'm over. I am in version four of my Silhouette Studio software. I'm in business edition, so I may have some buttons you don't have, but this should all work the same. Um, so what you're gonna do is we're gonna take a circle and draw it and click on it. And then we're gonna go down here to, it's a transformation window. And the sideways, the diagonal arrow is the scale tool. My um, lock is unlocked, which means we will, um, it's not gonna keep the aspect ratio locked, which means when I hit in my size, it's gonna make my circle into more of an oval. So the template needs to be 1.5. So, and then we'll hit 1.5 here. All right, and then we wanna put them somewhere between seven and 10 and below our inch mark. And that's where our circle is gonna go. Um, also, just in case you're wondering, in the page setup, this is the reveal. So that's why my mat's gray. So I have all my reveal gone. And then if you, move it around, that's when it becomes white and that's when it becomes gray. That's the puppy hitting the tripod. Really bit. All right, and so that's all there is to it. We're gonna hit our send panel. We are in um, just a simple, and this is gonna be double-sided adhesive. It's one of the drop-down menu options. And then we're gonna hit cut, and it's speed, or the blade is four, and I've just been using the regular ratchet blade. And then the default is two passes, you don't need two passes, you just need one. I don't know why it's, it. yeah, because it ends up cutting in the mat, as you can see. So you're only gonna need one pass. So let's go put the adhesive on the mat and then we'll cut our circle. All right, so this is my little double-sided adhesive. We're gonna put him right here between seven and 10 and make it two inches down. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna peel off this white and I'm on camera, so it won't peel off very easily. All right. So you want the sticky part, the adhesive, to stay on your yellow, yellow. And then we want to take the backing off. Between seven and nine, down one inch. And that is where we're gonna put this. 
And then we'll just load them into the cami or the curi or we'll load them into the cameo and have it draw the circle with the blade set at four. All right, so the machine got our circle cut. Now we're gonna take off this little top part. Now this is sticky. Now you can't take this mat out now. Don't take it out, don't touch it, don't do anything to it, all right? Because this lines up to what's on our screen and don't move the circle on the screen now. Um, and this, you can etch as many as you want to, but once this mat comes out, this template is done. So let's go back and I'll show you how to fill it all in. All right, so what we are going to put in here is our little lipstick monogram. There she is. So this is our lipstick monogram. I thought this would be cute or like a little charm on like a makeup bag or something. So here's our charm or here's our all right, so here's our monogram. We're gonna go to line color and make it all the same line color. So we're gonna make it all black. And then what we're gonna do is go over here to fill color and make it go away. So this is, then let's go over here to reveal and make it white. Does that make it easier to see? All right. So this is what would etch right now. If I put it in the machine and told it to etch, this is what it would look like. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to down here, it says open the sketch panel. So this is our sketch panel. We're gonna sketch the edge and then you're gonna pick in one of these. So either the hatch, the diamonds or the um, diagonals. Um, I don't know if any of these will really work so we're gonna do the hatch is one of my favorites because it does both ways it's it's more of a fill than one of these and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the transform transformation panel we're gonna go to the scale window again and we're gonna increase it 300 percent now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the sketch panel and we're gonna click the bottom down here that says release sketch now we're going to go back over here to the transformation panel, back to the scale window, and we're going to click it 33%. And what that did is now all my hatches really, really close together. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put an M in here. And I'm using, um, this is Crafty Little Nodes monogram. So we're going to make it the right size to fit in here. And then we're gonna repeat the same process again. So we're gonna go to, we're gonna go to the sketch window. And then why don't we do the diamonds on this one? So diamond and then the sketch edge. So that way you have an edge and the sketch inside. We're gonna go over here to transformation window, the scale, increase 300% back to the sketch. We're going to release our sketch. Go back over here to the transformation panel, back to the scale, and then down 33%. And then we'll put it in our little monogram frame. We have both of them selected. So now what we have to do, that's my puppy. She doesn't master the concept of being quiet yet. All right, so now what we have to do is squish it all down and get it to fit in the circle. Now, you do not want it too close to the edge and you gotta remember you got a hole up here at the top. So you don't want, so I selected all of it, hold the shift button and click the red circle because you can't move that red circle. And basically fidget until you get it where you want it. And now we need to make this M not be red because we're going to cut by color. So go over here to line color and then we're going to make it black. All right, and that's going to be our etch. We've left room for the hole up top and we're not, we're a little too close for there. So we're going to fidget with it. 
You don't want it too close to the edge just in case it decides to wander off the edge. So there we go. And we're gonna hit the sun panel. And this time we're gonna do cut by line color. And we're gonna turn the red off and turn on the black. And so that's what this is. And it's gonna be cardstock plain. So you pick any of these. So it's cardstock plain is the one I've been using. And down here we're gonna sketch. Okay. And then I've been starting with the force of 15. And then I've also lowered the speed. I don't remember what it was set at, but I've lowered it to five and we've done two passes. Now, um, I, like I said in the other video, I'm probably being a weenie by starting it with such little force. What I'm gonna do is increase it each time and then we'll work our way up to 33. I just, it makes me nervous to start off with the strongest force right from the beginning. I feel like you're kind of asking for the machine to bind up and cause a mess. So I always start at 15 and then um, increase the ten, uh, increase the, the force and then just make multiple passes. Um, you're going to want to make multiple passes um, just to make sure you have an etch like it needs to be. So we're going to put the blank on the machine and then hit send. All right, so we're putting in the precision etching tool. And it just goes in like a regular tool. These guys have protective coatings on the front. The packaging tells you how many protective coatings they have. So this one's got one on the front and the back. Um, the silver ones only have them on the front. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to put your blank in here and line it up so it's, you know, relatively straight and centered. The hole is the big thing because you don't want your design to be off center. And we're gonna hit send and be brave. And this is gonna take a while. Alright, so that's what it looks like after one pass. What I'm going to do is go increase the force from 15 to 25, and then we're going to hit this again. Alright, so all it is is you're going to increase it from 15 to 25, and then still two passes, and then we're going to hit send. Alright, that's what it looks like after I pass at 25. So I'm going to do the same thing and up the force to 33, same two passes, and then we will be done. Alright, so we are done. That's what it's going to look like. Um, when you are done with this all together, um, you can unload the mat. Now, if you want to go and put something else in here, so if you, so um, say I want to go do a different design on another one, you just pop this guy out, pop another blank in here, and then etch again. But once you take this mat out, this template is essentially busted because you're never going to get it lined back up with the computer with the way that these guys load. So you can keep using this template, but once you take this mat out, it's done. But we're done for the day and we're gonna go over and I'll show you what it looks like in good light. All right, so we're over here on our mat and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna peel this guy right off. And then he's done and that's what he looks like. That's pretty cool if I do say so myself. And then these guys have got another clear plastic sheet on the back that you would need to take off as well. And then for this guy, um, what you're going to do is you're just going to peel, I didn't, didn't do it right there. So you're just going to peel both of them off so the sticky's still on here. Adhesive. And then it's probably a cut through all of this. And peel it off. And then your well-loved little mat is available for some other project. So I hope you like this. So that's what it looks like. And so this is the two that are etched and filled in. And then this is the one we made in the other video. So this is made with the sketch files and then this is made with the etching fill tools in. These are made with the etching fill tools in the sketch pa panel. Okay, so that's a little crash course in etching in the, in the cameo. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any sketch file ideas you want or any video ideas, you can totally suggest them. I may or may not know how to do them. Um, 
But I hope you liked. Please like and subscribe to our little channel. Thank you so much.